Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back. My name is Steve and this is Made by Honey. All right, last time we went over three bourbons that are allocated and there are that I highly recommend to the beginning bourbon drinkers. Those who are sort of beginning on their bourbon journey, sort of getting into bourbon scene and bourbon experience. So top three allocated, which were rare or harder to find bourbons that, that I recommended. Today, sort of like a part two of that series, right? The top three non-allocated bourbons. So sort of easy to find, it might be out here and there, but they stock it usually. So you know, easy to find bourbons that you can find it at any you know liquor store or grocery store or big box you know, spirits store. So top three non-allocated bourbons that I highly recommend to the beginning bourbon drinker. So, all right, so let's get right to it. Similar to last time, three criteria in deciding top three bourbons that are non-allocated. Number one, uh, it has to be obviously available. You can find them readily at, at a store. So that's number one criteria. Number two, price. Uh, last time we set the bar at $100 for allocated bourbons, but I think for non-allocated versions where a lot of the times there is no markup, I think we it's only fair to sort of bring that down to around $50. And I thought about maybe bringing it down a little bit more, but I mean, it's so hard to get a bourbon that's a good bourbon that's under 50 bucks these days, frankly, at least in my name, uh, in a neck of wood. So set the bar at $50 for these non-allocated bourbons. And lastly, number three, again, it's obvious, but it has to taste good, in my opinion. This is subjective for me. It's my top three non-allocated bourbons that I recommend to the beginner. So these are the top three that I enjoy, that I highly recommend. Um, yours might be drastically different, um, and that's fine. And just let me know in the comments below. But for me, these are the top three that, that I highly recommend. If someone asks about, hey, what are the couple you know, bourbon recommendations you have? So, all right, let's get right to it. The first bourbon, this one was, this one was hard to pick, but First one is the Russell's Reserve Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey, 10 year old. This one was hard because personally, it's made by, made by the Wild Turkey Distillery. They make a bunch of good whiskeys. Um, but this one was hard because there's so many Wild Turkey products that I like. There's the Wild Turkey 101. Everybody loves that Wild Turkey 101. It's so versatile. You could mix it, you could drink it by itself. You can put in and put, uh, drink it with ice. So good. There's a Russell's Reserve single barrel. That one is so good, so jammy and so thick and good. You know, I have the bottle right there. It's already more than half gone. I love that bottle. Um, there's a Wild Turkey Rare Breed bourbon, which is, you know, higher on the proof. So I think it's somewhat, almost 60%. That one has a kick. Um, so if you like bourbons with a little bit of kick, that one's spot on. That's a highly recommend for that one. But for this video, we're recommending bourbons for the those folks who are sort of starting their journey, your journey as a bourbon drinker, you want to sort of ease into the bourbon scene. This one is something that I highly recommend. It's a 10 year old bourbon, price is around $30, $40, very affordable, and you can find it anywhere. Um, you, don't, you don't have to search for it, you don't have to wait in line for anything. It is so good. It has a little bit of nutty flavors that, uh, that Wild Turkey is known for, you know, has a little bit of a, uh, like a, it's a little bit creamy, I don't know if that makes sense, a little bit creamy, oily. It's only 45% alcohol, but it has that really rich flavor in there, which I really like. It does have medium to light finish, but it's not bad. Also, I highly recommend this one because there are a lot of people who sort of look, you know, are looking for Buffalo Trace products, especially the Eagle Air 10 year bourbon, right? That one is it's hard to find, even if it's out, it's all gets gone in within an hour or so. That one is also 45%. Uh, alcohol, same as this. It's a 10 year age statement, same as this. And it has very similar flavors. You know, Eagle Rare has, I feel like it's a little, little less sweet, but has more um, like oaky presence to it. Whereas this one is more fruity presence in there, a little less oaky. So if you're sort of looking for the Eagle Rare, you like the Eagle Rare taste, we can't find it. This is the perfect replacement in my opinion. So that's my number one bottle. Put that aside. Number two bottle, this could be controversial, but I mean, this is what I like to drink and uh, what I like to recommend to folks who are asking about, you know, what are some of the non-allocated uh, bourbons that you can find. So this one is the Michter's American Whiskey, made by the Michter's Distillery. It's not a high proof bourbon. It's only like 41, 
Yeah, it's 41% alcohol, so barely, you know, over 40%. So super easy drinking. You don't even need ice with it. You know, you don't have to mix anything with it. You just sort of sip it. You get all the flavors right away, and it's real gentle as you drink it. For me, it has that real vanilla flavors that is very prominent, but it's not the thick vanilla flavor. It's sort of like a, like a, like you know, like the Torani syrup that you put in your coffee, that the light syrupy vanilla, sort of artificial taste of vanilla, but I'm still vanilla. That, that kind of a vanilla taste in there. It sort of has the coffee aroma at the end as well. And it's super easy to drink, super easy to drink. Um, there's no, it doesn't tax your mouth or your palate or anything like that. Very flavorful. The price is around 30, 40 dollars, which is definitely doable. You can find this anywhere, basically in supermarkets or liquor stores or whatnot. Mictors usually have, you know, three other products that are sort of like the baseline uh, whiskey. They have this American whiskey, they have the bourbon, they have the rye, and they have the sour mash. A lot of people like the sour mash. I don't, personally, I'm not a huge sour mash fan. It sort of tastes like wood chippy at the end. Um, I think some people like that, that little bit of darker taste, a um, little like a drier taste uh, towards the end, but you know, that's not my thing. For me, a sweeter bourbon is better, and uh, hence uh, I picked this one. But what I'm trying to say is that the other Michter's uh, lineups are very good as well if you want to try those as well. So, so that's my number two bottle. And last but not least, this one is a slam dunk. It's the Old Forester 1920 bourbon, Prohibition style bourbon. This one is easily my top five of bourbon of all time, including allocated, non-allocated. It's so versatile. It has the high proof that you could sort of uh, use with cocktail or you can enjoy it with ice, so you could drink it nice and cold, or you could just sip it. So versatile, has so many levels of flavor, not just vanilla, not just sugar. It has that baked apple, like a, like a very soft baked apple, with like sugary apple taste in it. It tastes like, a, like an apple pie with like sprinkled cinnamon on top. It tastes like when you're, during holidays or like Thanksgiving or Christmas, you know, you're, you're cooking that apple pie in your oven and your whole house is filled with that, you know, apple smell, that cinnamon, the spices, the sugars, um, it sort of has that smell for days. You know, if you could bottle that, that essence of that apple pie with cinnamon, um, that whole, you know, homey feel, this is the bottle that, that could do it. This is definitely um, one of my favorites of all time. Finish is so uh, satisfying as well because it's higher proof. It's 115 proof, so it's it gives you that real nice cody feeling when you when you're swallowing it. It feels like uh, like the whiskey sort of like clinging onto the the walls of your of your, your of your innards of your mouth, sort of like clinging down as it, as it goes down. And I love that feel. I love that feel. And it's giving you all that apple, fruit, um, maple syrup flavor. Just letting your your nerves all just just absorb all that taste. Um, I love that about this whiskey. I love that about this bourbon. So, I mean, this one's a definite uh, slam dunk. You know, I was thinking about these three. I was preparing for this episode and I was like, number one, this one, and no doubt about it. I bought this bottle and I remember, I keep buying this bottle at Sam's Club for like 45 bucks, 45 bucks. You can't go wrong with this old Force 1920. You can find it anywhere too, so. All right, well, let's pour this bottle a little bit and uh, see what's what. Right away, I'm, I can smell the, smell like an apple. I think it's just me, but. Cheers, everyone. Yeah, that just the cooked apple tastes just overwhelming my senses. Um, like maple syrup, obviously, uh, sugars, everything that I expected. Here we go. So good, exactly how I expected. Here's an interesting thing. The heat is there, definitely there, but it doesn't, like a lot of the other bourbons, when you taste the you know, higher proof bourbons, it, it overwhelms you right away. The palate gets real sensitive and heat shoots up and you sort of have to like fight it and then you know discern all the flavors, pull all the flavors out of you know, while you're sort of dealing with that heat. This one is not like that. 
um, at least for me. It sort of has a gradual curve to it when it, when it comes to the alcohol, to, when it comes to the heat. So it lets you sort of enjoy the fruitiness, enjoy the apples, the, the, the sugars, the thick sugars, the like a burnt sugar. It lets you enjoy um, the, the, the little bit of oakiness that sort of lingers on at the end. Um, you know, a little bit of spices, the, the nutmeg and the, and the cinnamon, it lets you enjoy all that. And then the heat sort of comes in and then takes it over. So, and the, I, I really like that because it lets you enjoy all that. And then heat sort of comes in and, and uh, helps you with the, the finish. It sort of coats everything and, uh, and goes down your pipe. So it's so good. Let me have another sip. <clears throat> and it's really oily too. I don't know if you can tell, but it's real oily real viscous a little bit of molasses taste like butterscotch coming through the oak is there it's like a sweet oak it's, it's like a sweet, it's not like a bitter oak um, some bourbons have that bitter dark oak this is not like that it's very sweet oak yeah these are the three bottles i highly recommend uh, russell's 10 American Whiskey by Mictors, and of course, the 1920 Old Forester. All three are solid choices. They are my choices. Uh, let me know at the bottom, at the comment section, if you disagree. Let me know what your top three are. Um, I'd be happy to hear about it. But these are my top three choices, and I love these. I love these. I'm happy to you know recommend these to anybody who sort of is starting on your bourbon journey or starting on to sort of collect your bourbons and sort of build your bourbon collection. So. Alrighty, that's all I have. Guys, thank you so much. Just want to say thank you to everybody. I don't take any of you, or any of the viewers for granted. And that's not me. Um, I'm very thankful for, for this opportunity. I have fun doing, making these episodes for you. Obviously, I'm having fun drinking it too. Hopefully, I could, you know, you know, borrow 10 minutes of your time and sort of get your mind off the work or whatever for 10 minutes out of your day and sort of brighten your day that way. So, thank you so much. If you get a chance, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment below if you have any questions or if you want me to try anything in particular that you want me to try. So, but otherwise, thanks again. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.